welcome to the lecture on sheet metal operations that is the first part of this lecture will be regarding few operations and then in the next lecture we will be discussing about the remaining sheet metal operations. So, in this lecture we are going to have the introduction about the sheet metal operations and uh, uh, as we know that in sheet metal forming shape is produced from a flat blank uh, by stretching and shrinking the dimensions of all its volume elements in three mutually perpendicular principal directions. So, sheet metal operations basically that, that is also under the category of fabrication operations. So, in that you have normally uh, a, a stock material is in a in the form of sheet and they are basically having small thickness and uh, you have to finally, give a shape uh, like you have many type of operations which uh, are carried out uh, using the die and punch and maybe by using the shearing operations or by bending operations by stretching operations and all that. So, uh, here uh, the thing is that uh, uh, you have uh, uh, normally a die and a uh, punch, you have a punch which will be coming, you have the dies in, in that sense and then uh, they are coming and they are uh, you know pressing the sheet metal uh, uh, you know uh, metal sheets and then they are deforming it. Uh, maybe uh, because of the different uh, you know types of stresses uh, which uh, you know are generated because of the reaction of the uh, or, or because of the action and reaction of the you know punch which is falling upon the sheet. So, you will have the different operations uh, uh, going on. Now, uh, they are classified based on uh, uh, many you know like uh, you have it may be based on the type of uh, uh, stresses induced that is specific operations, then you have shape of the parts produced, what type of shape you are you know uh, producing or it may be uh, you know based on the severity of the you know, forming operations. So, as we know that uh, you have uh, you know uh, uh, when we talk about the severity of forming operations. So, uh, that is uh, based on the maximum amount of bending or stretching that can be uh, carried out or uh, we also do on what type of uh, uh, products we are uh, making like uh, that is uh, done in the case of automotive uh, uh, components. So, as uh, we see that uh, normally uh, you have uh, uh, the forming is normally carried out in the plane of the sheet by tensile forces. Now, in the case of the uh, sheet metal uh, your uh, op, you know you, the sheet is subjected to the tensile you know forces and that is uh, that basically uh, does the you know uh, deformation of in the sheet. So, normally we avoid these uh, compressive uh, forces because that may tend to the buckling of the sheets. So, we are not uh, you know deforming the material under compressive force basically we are applying uh, the uh, you know force in such a manner that sheet is under the tensile force and then uh, it is uh, subjected to deformation. So, decrease in uh, thickness is normally avoided in the case of uh, uh, sheet metal forming and another uh, very characteristic feature of these uh, sheet metal operations is that you have uh, high ratio of surface area to thickness uh, in these operations as compared to the conventional uh, metal forming uh, operations. So, uh, depending upon the type of parts which you are making in the uh, case of uh, sheet metal operations you can have uh, uh, you can have uh, singly curved parts, you may have simple type of uh, you know shapes you have single curved parts or you may have suppose uh, the contoured flanges that may be also there in the case of the sheet metal uh, operations. So, you have uh, uh, the shrink flanges or you have the stretch flanges, so that can be also there. Uh, then you have also uh, you may have the curved sections. Uh, you may have uh, the deep recessed parts, you may have the uh, shallow recessed parts. So, that way you have the variety of objects 
uh, which can be basically uh, obtained. So, based on the type of parts you are producing, you may have the different kinds of uh, you know uh, parts. So, based on that also you can have uh, these uh, operations like uh, you may have the singly curved parts. So, if you have uh, singly curved parts, so the, the part structure may be something like uh, you have uh, something like this and then that uh, goes. So, so this way you have uh, uh, such kind of you know, so you have such kind of uh, uh, you know part. So, so that way, so this type of uh, part which is uh, produced they are under the category of uh, singly curved parts. Similarly, you may have uh, the part which is that uh, you know stretch flange or you have uh, shrink flange. So, that basically will be coming like uh, when you have uh, some, uh, some uh, constructions like this way and then if it is stretching. So, so such kind of parts uh, they are basically coming under the you know uh, stretch flange type of uh, you know, parts. So, so this way, uh, this, so this kind of which where if you look at this sheet and this sheet, so this is stretched in, in that sense. They are under the category of stretch flange type of uh, parts. Similarly, uh, you may have uh, the similar you know uh, uh, part which is there, but in this case you have uh, um, you know such kind of uh, so um, uh, appearance. So you have this and uh, you know further you have so you will have uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, appearance so that is known as uh, the uh, shrink flange so here here you use this you can say uh, you can see that it is stretched uh, outward and here it is stretched inward so that is uh, shrunk in, in that direction so that is known as uh, the uh, shrink flange type of uh, you know uh, structures you may have uh, the curved section so you have this is singly curved then you have this as a stretch flange similarly you have this as the shrink flange You may have uh, the uh, curved parts, so uh, you have curved sections and uh, curved sections will look like uh, you have uh, this way and then uh, you will have the these curved sections like this and then further uh, from here also you will have this as the curved sections and uh, in, in, in this side also you will it will go like uh, this. and. Uh, from here you have uh, these also, also as the curved section. So, uh, that will be uh, the uh, indicative of these curved sections. So, this way you will have uh, such sections can be produced they are under the curved section parts. Uh, similarly, you have uh, also deep drawn cup. So, you have a uh, cup which is uh, deep drawn. So, you may have uh, some, some some kind of cup which is there and uh, then you have its uh, uh, you know the, the such kind of uh, you know geometry that is known as example of uh, deep drawn cups. So, this is something like curved section this is known as the deep drawn cup. Similarly, you have also some beaded sections. So, you will have certain type of impressions at the top surface. So, this way uh, you get the different types of uh, uh, you know products which can be made by the uh, sheet metal uh, operations. Now, uh, coming to uh, the uh, further uh, you have uh, uh, mostly high production uh, volume sheet metal forming is done on the mechanical or hydraulic driven uh, presses. So, it will be single or double or triple acting um, presses. You have punch and die which is normally uh, used which are they are mounted permanently in the sub press or a die set and uh, you have uh, basically progressive forming that uh, that means that uh, you have uh, successive stages in forming of part are carried out in the same die uh, on that uh, each stroke of the press. So, that way you have progressive forming mostly when we go for the punching or shearing operations. So, 
uh, that comes under this kind of operations. So, that is under the progressive forming. So, uh, one example of the uh, progressive forming as we discussed is uh, uh, this piercing and uh, you have uh, the blanking operation as we see. So, this is a kind of punch which will be coming and it will be uh, uh, this is the die basically. So, it will be coming and then it will be doing this uh, you know uh, making that uh, part as a whole and this way you have uh, these uh, you know making of the washer uh, in this part. So, this is the example of the progressive forming. Uh, as we were discussing about uh, there are different types of uh, you know bending and contouring methods. So, that is also a type of uh, you know uh, operation that is sheet metal operation here you have uh, you can see, they see that here we use the three roll bender. Uh, similarly, you have the example of uh, the uh, you know wrap forming. So, here you have a clamp and then you are uh, you know uh, applying the tension force. So, it will be rotating that way it will be stretched and uh, that is also you have uh, uh, and basically that is bent in that. Uh, uh, form. So, you have also in this case you have the wiper type of uh, benders which bend uh, you know. So, you have wiper rolls and, and this is a form block. So, they accordingly they will make that uh, bent in a particular uh, you know uh, you know shape. Now, uh, while dealing with the sheet metal operations uh, we need to also uh, uh, know the behavior of the material and in that case what happens that uh, you need to be uh, also giving certain uh, allowance or certain consideration for the spring back effect because uh, uh, the, the material once it is deformed and then when it is relieved. So, because of that relieving of the energy. So, since there is elastic as well as whole plastic uh, deformation also elastic plus plastic deformation. So, elastic part is uh, some elastic part is further trying to regain. So, there will be some spring back. So, that allowance also has to be taken and that part is to be uh, considered while uh, dealing with these uh, you know operations on the uh, you know sheet metals. Now, uh, type talking about uh, the uh, principal operations which uh, are there on the uh, press working. So, as we were discussing that. Uh, uh, you have uh, before that we must know how to classify uh, based on what kind of stresses are uh, there and based on that stresses what how the you know different processes are uh, classified. So, uh, the classification is uh, based on the uh, like this. So, if you have uh, the stresses involved and if you have the uh, operations then uh, you may have different kinds of uh, stresses and if you have the shearing stress. So, based on the shearing stress uh, you may have different types of metal uh, you know uh, the sheet metal operations and on the basis of shearing stress you have operations like uh, shearing, then you have blanking, you have piercing or we also call it as punching. Then you have uh, trimming, shaving, notching and nibbling. So, these are the methods which we will discuss uh, one by one and uh, these in these operations basically the shearing stress is involved and because of the shearing action shearing stress involved. Uh, these operations are being carried out. Similarly, uh, we use the tension uh, you know uh, tensile stresses. So, we do apply the tension force and in that category we have uh, stretch forming. Then you may have the compression also. So, using that uh, compression stress or compression force completely. Uh, you have uh, some operations like coining, sizing, ironing and hobbing. So, this is these are the uh, methods these are the operations which are based on the uh, compression stresses. 
then uh, based on the tension and compression both you have uh, methods like uh, drawing spinning bending forming embossing so uh, these are uh, the different types of operations which are done on the uh, you know uh, sheet metals and uh, these are the typically stresses which are uh, uh, you know involved for doing that uh, forming uh, you know on the sheet metal so uh, coming to the uh, you know so when we talk about the shearing blanking and punching now what is there in in, in such cases what happens in these uh, methods so uh, what we see that uh, these are the principal operations which are done shearing blanking punching and uh, uh, piercing now what happens uh, uh, normally in that if you look at these uh, shearing of these uh, sheet metal between the two cutting edges. So, uh, here this is the punch and this is the die and this is the sheet of uh, certain thickness and uh, this uh, sheet uh, will be you know as the punch is uh, being applied so uh, punch is uh, descending downward. So, at, at this place there will be deformation at this will and at this place also there will be you know so, they will be trying to deform and ultimately you will have a penetration here and then ultimately the material fails and then it will be uh, cut. So, basically you have this uh, given as the uh, clearance and the fracture occurs uh, you know in this zone, in this zone the, the fracture occurs uh, and uh, you this will be your seared slug. So, this is uh, uh, coming out finally. Now, what happens that uh, if you analyze, uh, so just before the punch works here it will be basically uh, just uh, before that punch works and once you have the punch with certain velocity and the force then uh, this uh, you know uh, it will be. Uh, so, here what happens that at the uh, you know top portion basically here you will have uh, this sheet will be subjected to some tensile and uh, here you will have the you know compressive type of uh, stress which is uh, developed on, on this uh, uh, part and uh, here also on this part you will have a you know compressive type of uh, you know stress which is uh, developed and because of that uh, the, the failure takes place uh, in, in such cases. So, uh, so just before the punch uh, you know so first is that uh, now, uh, now you can look at uh, the things uh, how it proceeds. So, before the punch will be uh, moving now uh, here. So, just before the punch contacts work this is the you know this is the situation where the uh, punch is trying to uh, uh, touch the um, work piece then punch will be trying to push the uh, push into the work. So, that will be causing the uh, plastic deformation then after that uh, the punch will be compress compressing and penetrating the into the work causing a smooth basically it will be causing a smooth cut surface here in, in this case it will be causing a smooth cut surface and then finally uh, finally what we see is that the fracture is as you see that this fracture here this fracture is uh, initiated uh, and uh, at the opposite cutting edges. So, that way uh, the material will be cut and then that two part uh, uh, will be uh, you know separated out. So, this way this uh, uh, you know shearing action will be uh, uh, taking place in the case of uh, this uh, uh, operation. Now, uh, you have basically uh, two operations uh, uh, there is uh, one is uh, blanking and another is uh, you know uh, piercing so or, or punching. Now, what happens that uh, in the case of uh, blanking uh, having blank is your motive. 
So, when you talk about the blanking operation, so in the case of uh, uh, blanking, now in the case of blanking, so suppose you have a sheet and uh, in that uh, uh, basically you have to have a blank of certain shape or you have to have a blank of certain shape. So, basically when uh, you use the punch, uh, this uh, size of the blank is being cut and they are uh, removed from this sheet. So, then uh, once you take uh, such kind of you know blank from uh, the different parts uh, and there, there may be you know all that. So, this part which is to be used and this part is the uh, scrap. So, that is uh, the process of uh, uh, blanking. So, as we see that in this the strip becomes uh, the scrap and similarly when we talk about the punching. So, uh, it is basically making the hole in the seat. So, in that case uh, in the case of blanking uh, when you are taking the blank out this blank is going to be used further and uh, the seat which is there which has been blanked which has been pierced uh, that is of no use that becomes a scrap whereas, when we talk about the punching or piercing. So, in that case uh, uh, the seat which is uh, you know punched this becomes the part and the part which is coming out it is of no use at that moment. So, that becomes a scrap. So, that is the uh, blanking and uh, uh, punching kind of uh, you know concept which is uh, you know defined in the case of uh, the sheet metal you know operations. Now, what happens that in these cases, so uh, in this case of uh, punching you have uh, this is the part and this becomes uh, uh, you know as a slug or a scrap which is uh, not to be used. So, that is the difference between the uh, you know uh, blanking and punching. Now, uh, in this case basically you have the shearing action involved and uh, uh, while uh, this punch descends down and then uh, it will be in contact with that stock or sheet and then uh, once it cuts then in that case uh, there will be you know uh, further uh, the, the sheet so there is elastic deformation. So, what happens that the stock basically will be coming inward and they will try to hold uh, they will try to uh, you know uh, grip that uh, you know punch while the punch is coming upward. So, that is why this uh, clearance is uh, provided you may have the angular clearance also uh, provided on this uh, you know uh, in, in the in the case of this uh, punching or uh, on, the, on the die basically. And uh, you have also be, uh, you know the provision of having a stripper. So, a stripper is there so that uh, you know the punch uh, comes and it does not uh, interfere further. So, the stock is in, in uh, be becomes in contact with the um, punch and so uh, that may lead to further the interfering of the uh, uh, process. So, that is why the stripper is there and uh, uh, you require certain force uh, you know the stripper also requires uh, uh, certain force and that stripper uh, force will be you know uh, function of the param perimeter of the that uh, stock which is being cut and the thickness of the work and multiplied by I mean product of these two multiplied by a factor k. So, that way this uh, stripper force is also uh, coming into picture in the case of uh, uh, these uh, uh, you know punching or blanking operations. Now, when we talk about the punching force, so when we talk about uh, punching force, so punching force calculation is uh, also done and it is uh, the force exerted by the punch. So, that uh, uh, it will be shear out the blank and uh, from the stock. So, that punching force uh, it will be basically depending upon the area which is uh, you know punched or, or the blanked and also the thickness of the material and shear strength of uh, uh, the material. So, basically we use the formula uh, punching force will be uh, P and that is uh, given as L into T into tau. 
So, this way we find this value of the punching forces and uh, this uh, L is uh, basically the you know uh, perimeter of uh, the work piece and then T is basically the thickness of the work piece and tau becomes the shear strength of the material. So, L is the perimeter of the cut and T is the thickness of uh, uh, the stock. So, L is perimeter of cut and T is thickness of stock. Now, uh, this way you get many a times uh, uh, this tau may be a function of the tensile strength of the material that may go as high as the tensile strength of the material also and at many places you may see that it will be 0.7 times the yield strength of the material multiplied by L t. So, there may be uh, such kind of uh, uh, you know uh, expressions. When the uh, we when we are punching the you know holes which are uh, smaller than the cut thickness. So, for uh, holes that is punching of holes smaller than stock thickness. So, there has been uh, some other kind of correlation or uh, which is used. So, P will be basically d t s upon cubic root of uh, d by t. So, basically in this case d is the diameter of the punch in mm. and S is the tensile strength of the stock in mega Pascal. Now, in this case also uh, you have L is used in mm, T is also used in mm and this is in mega Pascal. So, uh, this uh, tau is uh, in the mega Pascal shear strength of the material. So, that way you have to keep in mind the uh, different types of uh, different you know uh, the correlations which are there uh, which is uh, used in, in the case of the uh, blanking and punching. You have uh, also other operations of uh, the uh, in the case of uh, using the shearing stress forces or so. So, other operations which are coming are uh, like uh, trimming. So, as we know that uh, uh, you know trimming is required for the forged products where you have the flash formed at the parting plane. So, this flash is to be removed and in that case uh, this uh, these flashes are removed by the trimming operations. So, in that case suppose you have a, a forged product. So, normally uh, these are your uh, flashes in the case of uh, the forged products and, and this part this is to be basically removed. So, here from you will have the uh, punch and, and this punch will be you know like uh, so, so, this way you will have the punches it will be coming and, uh, you know, and, and it will be kept on the this die. So, that there will be a uh, you know die. So, and, and, and it will be basically cutting this. Uh, so, it will be going on uh, the. So, this will be your uh, bottom die and this is your punch and they will be coming and uh, cutting. So, this process is also done using that uh, shearing uh, stresses involved. Uh, similarly, you have uh, the saving operation and uh, this saving operation is also one of the you know uh, uh, sheet metal operation and in that uh, many a times uh, you have uh, uh, the hole which are made internal uh, you know portion of the hole which is made it is not completely clean. So, they are basically uh, you know so there is no closed tolerance. So, for uh, uh, close tolerance whenever we do the blanking or plunging small bursts are left and they are basically removed by these uh, saving operation. And uh, in that case uh, uh, you have uh, the, those uh, bursts, small bursts which is left uh, they will be removed. And the next uh, operation will be nibbling and in the case of uh, nibbling 
what happens that sometimes you have uh, the irregular tip type of uh, specific contour is cut and in that uh, the, the tool is uh, you know in the seat uh, uh, you have to uh, go for uh, the you know punch repeatedly and uh, you have to. Uh, so, when you have a specific type of contour which is long and uh, using the separate punch uh, you know uneconomical in those cases uh, you know we use. Uh, so, what we do is normally you have uh, such kind of uh, contours are there uh, in the seats. Uh, so, here you will have uh, a nibbling tool and, and that is uh, used for this uh, uh, forming operation. So, uh, so the, the special uh, special type of a small punch uh, will be uh, used and uh, they will be repeatedly you know uh, uh, used along that uh, necessary you know contour formation. So, they will be uh, used for making that specific type of uh, profile. So, uh, it is uh, when uh, used when the contour is basically long and uh, when you have to use that uh, you know I mean using that separate punches uh, every step it will be uneconomical that time you go for uh, nibbling. Similarly, you have uh, operation like notching when you have to make external notches then in that case uh, we use these uh, you know operations. So, that way uh, like uh, this. So, this this type of operation when we make the notches in that. So, they are the example of uh, the uh, notching operation uh, which is uh, for cutting the specified small uh, you know portion of metal towards the edge of the stock when we do. So, that is known as the notching. So, again here you have a uh, punch which will come and cut certain part from the material. So, this way uh, you have uh, these uh, different kinds of the uh, sheet metal operations. In, in this lecture. Thank you very much.